um, to impact, have a positive impact on national security. So I joined Stanford and did work on airborne contaminant dispersion linked to coupled air sea models. So I'll be talking about that tomorrow or the next day in the next seminar. But for today, perfect, thank this you. This is presenter. So what is the one forward pointer? Yeah. Okay. Back and forward. Okay. okay, thanks. So for today, I'll talk about um, my most recent work focused on the Philippines. And this um, was a paper we published in the spring as a collaboration with Arnold Gordon, who's a seafaring oceanographer at Columbia and um, meteorologist Maria Flatow, who is a Madden Julian Oscillation Tropical Meteorologist model. Jim so Doyle, about who that. has been working with me on a couple of predictions at the Naval Research Lab. But for today, perfect, thank you. And our collaborators okay. in the Philippines. Okay. So for today, so, I'll talk about um, my most recent work focused on the Philippines. And this um, was a paper we published in the spring as a collaboration with Okay, so, so our focus over the last few years as part of the Philippine Strait Dynamic Experiment, which was a Navy funded project to again do a, a focused measurement campaign in a part of the world where the processes um, were, uh, we were looking for ways that we can improve the modeling in certain areas and certain processes. So the Philippines was one of those measurement campaigns that was chosen as a region. And in particular, our focus has been on looking at the interaction of the, the, the strong terrain with uh, atmospheric disturbances propagating through the area and the ways that that generates spatial temporal complexity, particularly in the ocean, and, but also in the atmosphere. Um, and so a lot of our, our work over the last couple of years has been looking at the ways that um, these patterns are modulated in space and time. So rainfall patterns, is what I'm gonna talk about um, in this talk after I, I talk a little bit about some of the background work that we've been doing in this region. Um, our primary tools have been coupled air sea models. We use a lot of the observations that are coming out of the programs, uh, both space-based as well as in situ. So I'm gonna talk about the atmospheric flows around island topography and the ways that those uh, generate eddy structures in the ocean talk about rainfall patterns, and then give you a few slides on the year of the maritime continent. That's that upcoming field campaign. So um, this was a, a picture generated by uh, Pierre Flamont at University of Hawaii. Um, he, among others, noticed this really interesting wind stress pattern in the, in the Philippines. So, um, so this is the Philippines here, Vietnam. This is um, Borneo. This is <clears throat> Indonesia of all over here. Um, and what you see is because of the strong volcanic terrain along the Philippines, you have this pattern of strong and weak wind stress in the lee of the islands. This is during the winter, this is the northeast monsoon. So the winds are coming from the northeast. And this really um, strong banded pattern of high, low, high, low wind stress. And that's gonna prove really important to the ocean circulation as we'll see in a moment. Um, Others had noticed before that this type of pattern can lead to strong Ekman pumping in the lee of these islands. So imagine these are volcanoes and you have the strong wind stress. Then you get the, the strong, weak, strong, weak pattern leads to Ekman pumping, upwelling and downwelling, convergence, of course, on the surface currents, and then these um, eddies, a pattern of, of um, double gyre or cyclonic, anticyclonic eddies. So where is this important? Where is this relevant? So there's several places on the planet where um, these sort of dynamics have been investigated. So Hawaii, Cape Verde, Canary Islands, the background winds, these are all embedded in a background seasonal wind flow pattern, the trades, um, other wind region, regimes that have average velocities of these values. The Philippines is kind of unique when you situate it in this context because the background winds during the northeast monsoons are actually even stronger. They're over 11 meters per second. And as we'll see in a moment, there's intensification in these winds that are very important for these eddy dynamics. So that's what we're going to investigate in the next couple of slides is um, the way that these strong wind flows around the Philippines uh, impact the eddy dynamics in the ocean. So, one of the um, features of the Philippines are 
cold surges are monsoon surge in, in surges or intensifications. And this is a meteorology slide that shows you how these develop. So what we're looking at is this is the, the date of the picture. So this is um, 2004. This is December 30th, 31st, January 1st, 2nd, 3rd, um, and going, uh, going down the slide. Sorry, this is, uh, so, so we're looking at four different days from December 30th down to January 2nd. And we're looking at uh, two different panels. So one is showing you the sea level, th this panel, these panels are showing you sea level pressure and um, temperature at the surface. This one is showing you the 500 millibar height and wind speeds aloft. So uh, the evolution over time is showing how these cold surges develop. So they start, they're created by a displacement of the Siberian Mongolian high. So this high migrates southward and brings with it these colder temperatures. So notice how the, um, the temperature is dropping over Hong Kong down to um, eight degrees here over, over Hong Kong as it brings these colder temperatures with it. You can see the pattern of these stronger winds. And when we simulated this time period with our um, coupled air sea model, you can see the impact on the Philippines of these um, quite strong over 15 meter per second winds. And again, creating that banded pattern of high, low, high, low winds in the region. So we've been employing um, coupled air sea modeling. This is the simulation features for the, the particular set of simulations I'm gonna show you next. And what we found is that these synoptic disturbances or monsoon surges really create um, an interesting dynamic in the ocean. And so this is a one particular monsoon surge that occurred on January 1st, 2005. It was the same one we looked at previously. And this is the wind stress curl from a later monsoon surge. So notice this first wind stress curl pattern has more of a northerly orientation. So that was the one whose evolution we saw here where you see the, um, the winds coming much more from the north. This one happened later in the season and the winds are more from the east. It's a different type of monsoon surge, but still a monsoon surge. Um, but the wind stress curl pattern is different. So what do these things have in common? What do they do in the ocean? So this is ocean sur surface vorticity. It spins up a double gyre in the ocean. These gyres are about um, 100 kilometers to 200 kilometers across. They extend down to about 300 meter depth in the ocean. And what's unique about the Philippines is that um, over the ensuing several days and weeks, these eddies detach from the coast and move out into the South China Sea. So under the impulse of these monsoon surges, there's a spin up and detachment of these eddies into the South China Sea. And it's a repeatable phenomena. It's a, a forcing that occurs um, a couple times per month. You get the monsoon surges. Not all of them impact the Philippines, but when they do, this um, ocean eddy pattern develops in the Philippines. So we had hypothesized this in, in this paper in GRL, and then we were out on a research cruise. Well, let me, let me tell you this first, and then I'll talk about the research cruise. Um, for that same, uh, eddy feature that you saw, th this is the verification um, of it. This was the monsoon surge that happened in early January 2005. This one happened in later January. But you see here the, the warm and cold core ocean eddies. This is sea surface temperature and surface currents for two different um, eddy phenomena or eddy time periods. This is the satellite SST showing the, the cold core eddy and also looking at chlorophyll particularly for this one that happened um, later in uh, January, early February, you can see the, the, the signature in the chlorophyll of the double gyre. Um, you can see the, uh, on the periphery, you see enhanced biological productivity for the anticyclone and for the cyclone, you see it in the, the interior, the, uh, the chlorophyll. Yeah. Yeah, it has um, it has colder temperatures from the upwelling, exactly, and then that influences the biological productivity. So you have 
um, more chlorophyll associated with the, the cyclonic eddy, yeah. So we happened to be out um, on a research cruise and uh, we experienced a monsoon surge. We were doing real-time prediction with the coupled ARC system. And so I was able to design a sampling track to go and sample within the eddy, which was a, a wonderful opportunity. And so this was our ADCP, this was in 2008, this was our ADCP currents for the, um, the lower eddy, the southernmost eddy, and you can see it um, also in the predicted currents here. So we were also able to get uh, water samples within the eddy, our Philippine colleagues were sampling there. Um, so this is, let's see if I can get that to play. Is it an animation? Is it an animation, yeah. So this is an animation just to show you the complexity of the currents in this area. This was the time period when we were out on the research <coughs> cruise. Um, this is the island of Luzon, and these are the double gyre structures. Oh, that's okay. That's right. Um, so the point of this was just to show the, show the complexity in the currents, and particularly the flows through these island passes. And this is another aspect of the measurement campaign. These are typically shallow sills, and there's a, there can be a, a strong reversals in currents through these island passages. So that was another aspect of the sampling for this, this field campaign, is the complexity between these island passes. And we wrote about the reversal in current through the Mindoro. This is the island of Mindoro. It has two tall islands on it. Um, I mean, two tall volcanoes on it. And so we, we wrote about the, the, the um, reversal and flow through this passage in this paper down below. So just to sort of overview what we had learned um, going into our most recent work was that really the unique geometry of the Philippines um, highlights a lot of the wind-driven response. Um, the winter monsoon features have these jets and wakes, and they produce dynamic features in the ocean. Um, you can see these structures from satellite and from the high-res ocean atmosphere modeling we were doing, and um, that the monsoon surges that we hypothesize as a robust forcing mechanism for the eddy dynamics in this area um, for enhancement and detachment, we were actually able to go out and sample them and show that this, um, this is a, a, a common feature of, of the area. And, leads to and helps produce the eddy population that migrates into the South China Sea. How deep are they? Uh, about 300 meters. So now I'm going to transition to the second part of the talk, which is um, focused on looking at the, the implications for rainfall. So these are the um, satellite trim rainfall totals from four adjacent winters to the time period that uh, we were out sampling, which was in winter of 2008. So you can see that that winter 2008 was the rainiest winter in 40 years in the Philippines. And these are the, some of the adjacent patterns. Um, all of them show enhanced rainfall on the, on the uh, eastern side. That's the uh, windward side of the islands. You expect you get the, um, the lifting, orographic lifting uh, of the on, oncoming monsoon winds and you get enhanced rainfall on the eastern side. But much higher levels of rain showing up for the, um, that winter of 2008. So we set out to understand why. Why was it so rainy during that particular um, year? So we worked with the Weather Service of the Philippines and they pro provided um, over 40 uh, stations, meteorological stations throughout the Philippines, uh, weather data, and, and as I showed before, we were working with the trim data as well. So we used um, a different configuration of the same modeling system. This is the Navy's Coupled Ocean Atmosphere Mesoscale Prediction System, or COANTS. We nested down to three kilometers resolution um, focused on the Philippines. So three kilometer atmosphere, three kilometer ocean, two-way coupled at a coupling interval of several minutes. So what we discovered um, are several multi-scale factors that contributed to the, the, the enhanced rainfall in, in the Philippines during that time period. So first of all, there was a moderately strong La Nina that peaked in January, February 2008, that same period we we're interested in. 
Um, and that create that when those occur, when La Nina occurs, I'll show you a slide in just a moment of a, a map of it. When it occurs, it's known to produce elevated rainfall across the, um, the Philippines. There was also a negative to neutral Indian Ocean dipole, and that can generate um, more intense Madden Julian oscillations and interseasonal oscillation in this area. And so the Indian Ocean dipole is a measure of the, um, the, the polarity of the temperature across the Indian Ocean. And so that can be when it's warmer in the eastern side of the Indian Ocean, that can lead to more moisture um, propagation for the Madden Julian oscillation. So negative to neutral, meaning warmer temperatures on the eastern side of the Indian Ocean is what, what was actually occurring. So um, this is just a schematic showing you El, El, uh, La Nina phase um, produces stronger rainfall across the whole region. Um, it also produces warmer temperatures on the western side of the Pacific. And for the, the particular period of time um, we were looking at there, it was um, several degrees warmer adjacent to the Philippines, which of course would enhance also the, the moisture um, being picked up by the seasonal colder monsoon winds coming across. And then this was um, from our, our paper where we see the uh, two measures um, for, the, for this area. So the, the Nino index, which is the, the red dashed line. And so the period of time that we're interested in is, is right here. And this deflection of the um, Nino index showing a moderate to um, strong La Nina. And then the, the dipole mode index, which is a measure of that polarity of the Indian Ocean. So the Indian Ocean dipole being um, ne somewhat negative here, meaning there's warmer temperatures on the eastern side of the Indian Ocean. So both of these were factors that were um, favorable for more rainfall in, in the region in the Philippines during that time period. Um, another contributing factor is, that, is just that the season was a uh, northeasterly monsoon, which is known to create that east-west um, rain gradient. This is over 25 years of rainfall data uh, across the Philippines. The blue is the enhanced rainfall on the eastern side of the Philippines, more focused on the the southeast side of the Philippines. And so that's an expected climatological pattern for the rainfall in the area. So um, interseasonally, the Madden Julian oscillation is, is a factor. So these are um, interseasonal oscillations that propagate um, along the equator around the globe. They're kicked off in the Indian Ocean. They propagate into the Pacific actually around the globe and they carry with them a wet and dry phase as they propagate through. So the Madden-Julian oscillation has been a focus of um, several field campaigns recently. The most recent one was uh, Dynamo, which was sponsored by, it was an international campaign also, the Navy participated in it, and it was focused on understanding the initiation mechanisms of the Madden-Julian oscillation. Um, so one of the ways that you measure the strength of the Madden-Julian oscillation is um, what's called the Wheeler-Hendon diagram, and it shows basically the movement propagation uh, around um, the, the globe of the, the MJO or Madden-Julian oscillation. So when it's in the sixth and seventh quadrant, that's when it impacts the uh, Philippines. And you can see that basically every single line is a, a trail or a trajectory of a given MJO event. So there were several that were um, active during the period of time, this winter 2008 that we were looking at. And you measure the, um, there's a, a, you do a decomposition of two, of, of two components of um, the outgoing long wave radiation um, and the winds that give you, 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 um, you can decompose it into two aspects. And then this is the, the real time multivariate um, time series or modulation of the MJO. And this is the time period of where we had the most intense rainfall. And you can see this rim index is, um, reaches up to two or three during that period of time. So uh, an amplitude of over one means there's significant MJO activity in the area. So having an amplitude for a given um, month or two of two to three is, is quite large, showing that there's a lot of MJO propagation. So as I said, these MJOs bring 
um, wet and dry phases, and in the wet phase, they can bring significant rainfall to the region. So the fact that this was this particular season that we've been looking at was um, had a very strong um, propagating MJO signal is another factor um, driving these strong rainfall events. So synoptically, there was also um, a prolonged cold surge in February. So it was unusually strong and unusually long. When we looked at those cold surges in the beginning part of my presentation, those lasted a couple days. And what we looked at earlier, the impact of those, the banded wind stress curl patterns produced by the cold surges and what that did to the ocean um, currents and structure in the ocean. But what we're looking at now is the fact that there was this, this long cold surge event that lasted um, a week or so and particularly strong and this intensification is going to um, enhance the moisture convergence, the intensification in the winds. So here was that, that uh, cold surge in February. So uh, looking at this point here, the winds were 16 meters per second oncoming winds. Again, you see this strong, weak, strong, this is the island of Mindoro. In the Lee of Mindoro, you see these um, very weak winds. The color is uh, wind strength and the arrows are showing the, um, the direction. In terms of the uh, sea surface temperature, these temperatures here were, this was from the model, both of these are from the model. These temperatures here are several deg degrees warmer um, because it's a, it's a La Nina. So uh, another way to look at these MJO events is a time longitude plot. This is the longitude of the Philippines and these red circles are showing you the, um, the interseasonal MJO band of the propagation. So in this particular time period of interest, there were two events, event one and event two, that uh, passed through the Philippines. And those two um, created particular, uh, these are the, the rainy events encompassed in here, um, particular uh, rainfall patterns on the Philippines, as I'll show you in a second. So we had access to the weather station data, rain gauge data for the Philippines. Um, this is showing you on the left the satellite data with correlating it with the in-situ data of the rain, gauge, rain gauges on the ground. And so, um, and we're going to look at two particular stations, um, Katarman and Kapilogan right here in, in just a second. But one thing to note is that the, the satellite rainfall is, uh, so this is for the, this, uh, the whole season in, in 2008, is the, the trim rainfall totals are quite uh, large uh, adjacent to the land and they don't, they're not really measuring um, anything over the land. So this is a limitation of, of trim rainfall on, over very steep terrain. And for instance, the, right here on the island of Mindoro, there's, there's two mountains um, that reach about 2,500 meters each. So very strong volcanic topography on these islands. And Trim has difficulty um, measuring rainfall over steep terrain. Is there any radar here? Um, no, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and so also if you notice, so this is the three kilometer coamps. Now I've put that in the mix with the rain gauge totals as well. And you can see that the Coamps is showing rainfall in the mountains, in these mountainous areas, and the rain gauges were not well situated to capture that. So we're going to investigate that a little bit more. But you can see Coamps um, is showing that pattern of enhanced rainfall on the east side of the, of the Philippines that does match up with the, uh, the, the trim localization of high rainfall values. But Coamps is also showing these um, strong rainfall in the mountainous areas, which, you know, is, is something that you could you can imagine expecting to see these are the tropical island. islands. Yeah. Um, uh, so the, the these are uh, it's a monsoon season, so the winds are coming from the north northeast. Yeah, I mean the east. Yeah, this is the upwind. Yeah, yeah. These are this is the upwind side. Also on the western side of the This over here. Yeah. So the mother is forecasting. Exactly, exactly. That's not picked up by measurement. The, um, these are time series plots at two stations, Katarman and Katbalogan. So just again, correlating these three different measures. 
So the station data is in red, the model is in blue, the satellite is in green. So these gray bands at the two stations, this is that first NJO event. The gray bands and the second part of the time series record is the second MJO event, which lasted longer and actually overlapped with this prolonged cold surge, which is the dashed gray lines, okay? So you see, and remember from that time longitude plot, there were several different um, rain bands associated with, it, with each MJO event. And you see that here, you see that for MJO1, you see several different, um, periods of an intense rainfall. And for this one, you see three distinct periods of rainfall. And this middle period of the MJO2, the model doesn't capture that at all, but it captures the first and the last uh, rain bands. Maybe you could yeah. continue the model simulation uh, starting the next week time. Yeah, so, so these are, this is using the Navy's operational model. So it's doing, it's doing data simulation and it's doing, uh, not of the rainfall data on the ground, but it's using, um, taking satellite observations of the area. Oh, so each forecast is several days. So it's, there's an initialization phase with data simulation and each forecast is run for several days. It, these, this is a hindcast, but yes. Okay. But it's not a continuous hind. It's a, it's a, it uses data simulation. What is the lead time for each of these weeks and months? When the forecast starts? Is it one day forecast, two day forecast? When we yeah, these were two day forecasts. And I start, I, I extract hour five to the end of the forecast. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? But you can see from here, there's a hint that the model is, is actually over predicting the rainfall. Okay. So this is a, um, a map that shows the model simulation of precipitation for the two different MJO events. So these are totals of rainfall over those periods of time. And so we're looking from the Pacific out out to the west and this is so this is that area so this is where you would normally see rainfall from the climatology this is the southeast side of the philippine island um, these are the mountainous areas that i pointed to before the island of mindora this is the island of luzon so you can see for and, and notice these scales are are different much uh, higher rainfall totals for the mjo event too so you can see especially for the second event really high rainfall that the model produces in those mountainous areas, but enhanced rainfall also uh, along the um, eastern side of the Philippines. So for this particular time period, there was um, flooding on the island of Samar. So this, it's that island right there. And they reported um, landslides and evacuations here because of the rainfall. So let's look again at that rainfall in the mountains. So these are the, these are the locations of the two mountains in the Philippines, of uh, on the island of Mindoro, the ones we're going to focus on, and look at all the rivers that drain those mountains. And so, in this time period where the model was predicting or uh, showed high rainfall, this area of Mindoro uh, was evacuated. So, over 15,000 15, people were evacuated, and uh, because of rainfall in the mountains, we were as part of that same research cruise that I described earlier in the presentation, we were out sampling in the lee of the island of Mindoro. And we, we were sampling in January 2008. And these are showing you these significantly lower salinity values off of Mindoro compared with adjacent uh, time periods when we were out sampling on the cruises. Um, actually, this is in December 2007. So this uh, is still part of the same season, but compare it with uh, springtime of um, 2009. So if you look at the, um, the CTD stations, this is 133 and 140 in January 2008 that we were sampling. The model is in red and the observations are in blue. So the observations show this fresher water near the surface um, off the island of Mindoro in these two locations. 
the model, which does not have any river discharge included in it, is not showing that fresh that freshening near the surface that was produced by the observations. And so we think this is increased evidence that there was river freshening of the coastal areas because of rainfall in the mountains and that that um, played a significant factor in, in the so, sort of whole hydrological link of the Philippines. And for us, that's also motivation to include a hydrological component that links the rainfall with the um, freshening of the adjacent coastal waters. And we're also, we've been investigating and we'll continue to look at the, the implications of that for the ocean circulation in terms of creating that barrier layer um, at the surface. So this is just a summary of, um, of the results I've shown you so far. And what is that? Oh, so, um, so the key points are that there were these um, episodes of intense MJO activity. Rainfall um, in the Philippines corresponded with those episodes of um, MJOs. And there were several other factors that contributed to overall increased rainfall in the, in the Philippines. There was a cold surge that also um, intensified the rainfall. And we looked at how all of those converged to create the rainiest winter in, in 40 years in the Philippines. This is an animation. I can show you that later if you all are interested. You can see the different uh, rain episodes pass through the region. Um, and this is an animation of the sea surface temperature from the model. I can show you that later as well. Um, I want to show you a few slides on the upcoming field campaign for the years of the maritime continent. So this whole area is the, the maritime continent. There's a lot of interest internationally and, and one of the main drivers of this field program is are the um, local countries. So Indonesia, Singapore, and Malaysia are um, coming together to create a measurement campaign that's unprecedented for them in this area. So there's a lot of interest on the diurnal cycle of rainfall, the ways that the, um, the clouds and convection migrates off the coast out on into the, um, the open ocean. And there's particular interest out here um, from the Japanese in sampling that, the, the diurnal processes of rainfall in this area. There's a lot of interest on the ways that um, aerosols and biomass burning um, impact sea spray and the physical and chemical processes. The Navy has a component of this that's focused on the, the burning and the um, aerosols and measurements from um, aircraft as well as a satellite. There's also, it looks like um, Office of Naval Research will be funding work associated with um, understanding upper ocean mixing and, um, and upwelling as well as air-sea interaction in this area. There's um, one of the, the key components of this is augmenting the, the radar and using some of the NOAA algorithms to uh, create uh, better um, measurements of rainfall through rain gauge combined with radar. And so that's one of the, the focus areas. So the Navy has put out a, um, an initiative um, called Piston Propagation of Interseasonal Tropical Oscillations across the Philippines and Maritime Continent. So this builds on the work that they had funded previously as part of the Philippine Straits Dynamics Experiment that I described before and the um, research cruises that we did in that regard. And um, they'll be looking at uh, building this program starting in, in January. So this is just the timeline of when a lot of these measurements are going to be taking place. There's um, a kickoff meeting next month in Jakarta that I'm going to to help plan these, the measurements and the implementation phase. These are what the countries have um, provisionally put out as what they wanna be doing as part of this uh, campaign. And they're all gonna come together and, and organize and start um, creating a, a more refined plan for pulling this off over the next several years. And so the target timeframe is 2017 to 2019. The, um, the Philippines, has organized their data. They have a new um, visualization initiative to put out um, all of the, the data sets that they have available and, and model fields as well. So this is going to be a major contributor to this campaign to have access to the Philippines data. We've also discovered um, that as a part of their water work, the Philippines has gauged some of their rivers 
um, but not the ones that we needed data for at the times that we were looking for. But this is a nice um, additional set of, of data that, um, that we're hoping to, the, this, this, this data set is from the island of Mindoro for um, a different um, time period than, than had the, the heaviest rains that we were looking at earlier. And our colleague Cesar in the Philippines, he went out and visited the waterworks in Mindoro and they basically pulled out a drawer where they had written down the, the values. And so he had to take the paper and um, put it uh, together to, uh, and sent it to me so we could, he had to digitize it. But hopefully they'll get to the point where this will be a part of the um, measurements that will just be automatically included for the year of the maritime continent. So this would also tie into an ability to, um, to link in the hydrodynamic model. So the next step for COAMPS is to add in Wharf Hydro. And so they've already been linking um, COAMPS with Wharf Hydro and looking at other regions, including the Philippines, where they have varying degrees of data sets available for um, testing out that coupling of Wharf Hydro with, with COAMPS. So that's, that's up ahead. Uh, here's some papers that came out of that work. Um, that's all I have. So thanks for your attention. Yeah. Given that you were running the couple models and looking all the results in the ocean, I suppose if you have maybe looked into, was there any feedback between the ocean and the 